today's order. Roll call or no invitation, please. By Alderman Gonzaga. Dear Madam Father, as we uh, gather here in this council chamber, Lord, and just ask you to put your uh, guidance into this meetings that we are about to do. Lord, be with us to make the right decisions. And Lord, thank you for this day. Be with the ones that are less fortunate than we are and sick. Watch over them. And Lord, I just thank you for this the blessing of this uh, city watching over us. And be with the law enforcement and the fire and first responders and be with them. And I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Megan Bryant. Here. Megan Here. 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 The roll call. Larry Bess? Yes. John Brittle? Yes. 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 Minutes of the Water Committee meeting held February 16, 2021. Minutes of the Regular meeting held February 16, 2021. Minutes of the Ordinance Committee meeting held February 18, 2021. Minutes of the Finance Committee meeting held February 18, 2021. And Minutes of the Street and Sewer Committee meeting held February 25, 2021. And Minutes of the Public Facilities Committee meeting held February 25, 2021. Motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Motion by Alderman Driscoll. Second, Alderman Budd. Roll call. Larry Budd? Yes. John Bertel? Yes. Ernie Jordan? Yes. yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. 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 Megan Bryant? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. I'd like to present my friend tonight, <coughs> Sheriff Kettle Camp. He's got a presentation on the Christian County Jail. So, floor is yours, Sheriff. Thank you. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with everyone here tonight. And really, I'm going to be real brief. I just wanted to uh, give an uh, open invitation to anyone up here. I would, I would really appreciate if you uh, come do a tour of the jail. Uh, you know, when, you, when people drive by and they say, "Oh, that building looks fine." You know, it's a nice-looking brick building, but uh, it was built in 1975 to house anywhere from 15 to 20 inmates, and now we're averaging close to uh, 60 inmates. Uh, so, I brought a list, and, and that 60 inmates is a lot of the hard work and great work that Chief Wheeler has done here in Taylorville, cleaning up the, the city. And I, I think it's all about public safety, and, and we've got to keep this, the street safe. We need more room. I'm sure Chief Wheeler could put more people in our jail. Uh, so we, we need it badly. Uh, the jail is busting the seams. It's falling apart. And uh, it's just, you know, that it's not built to handle 60 inmates along with all the sheriff's employees in there. Uh, along with, the, you know, we have the sheriff's office in there, and we have a, an evidence vault in there that's in very bad shape. Uh, we have leaks in the, in, the, in the ceiling that's leaked down into some of the evidence. Some of the evidence has been destroyed. Uh, it's way overcrowded. Uh, we just need a, a new building for the sheriff's office. And again, I think that shows goes back to the public safety. We have to be able to keep that evidence secure and dry in good condition uh, to convict these individuals. So, really, that's basically all. You know, it's a penny on a penny on a dollar. Uh, and I just, again, I just wanted to come here and, and extend an open invitation to any of you who want to come. A lot of people, but that people that come in, it really opens their eyes once they get inside and see the conditions of our jail. Mm -hmm. uh, we have leaky roofs, we have the plumbing, we have so many drains that are in that building, and every one of them needs to be replaced. And that's very, very expensive. So, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to ask any of them. Anybody have any questions about the public safety? 
How do I get a hold of whoever to tour it? Just call the office and they ask to speak with the jail administrator, Cecil Polly, and he can set that up. Thank you Again, very much. Sir. Thank you for the time. It. Thank uh -huh. you. Thanks. Oh, one, I forgot. Okay. I forgot. I brought this list and I almost forgot. Today we have 52 inmates. Out of the 52 inmates, the leading number of, of individuals are in there, the arrests were made by the Taylor Police Department. There, we've got 18 that people are in there on cases from uh, Taylor Police Department. There's 15 from the Sheriff's Office. There's 10 from uh, Pena Police Department. There's six, we have six federal inmates. Um, we used to, before we got this overcrowded, we used to average about 10 to, to 12, um, but now we're, we're, we're down to six, and that's all we're housed. And uh, then we have, Ken KPD's got a couple in the jail, and then we're holding one for uh, corrections. But a majority, the, the highest number is the people that have been arrested here on cases from table, the city of Taylor. So that's why I think it's really important for the city of Taylorville to get behind this and, and vote for this state tax. Thank you very All much. Right. Thank you. Uh, Planning Commission recommendations. Mr. McClure? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, met tonight uh, to discuss the uh, uh, proposed changes to um, the zoning ordinance in regards to the accessory buildings. And after discussion, the uh, Planning Commission voted unanimously to approve uh, the recommendation. Recommended change. Something like that. Yeah. Recommended change. There we go. Thank you, sir. Need yeah. a motion to approve the planning committee recommendation. All by Alderman Bryan. Second. 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 All in favor? Second. All in Questions or comments? Roll call. John Burrow. Abstain. Attorney Dorsey. Yeah. Kathy Dorsey. Yes. Lee Lane Buddy. Yes. Jamal? <coughs> no. Chris Lopetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? No. Motion carries five to two. An ordinance amending section 10 9 that's one we just uh, approved, so the mayor votes on that, correct? The mayor votes yes. So the motion carries six to two. Hold on, I'm, or Josh is trying to say something new. You trying to say something, sir? Yes, that was the motion to accept the recommendation, but now you need to take a vote on the actual ordinance. Okay. And, and the mayor will vote, and that will require a majority affirmative vote to pass, which means out of nine, you got to have five yeses. Okay. Okay. Well, I apologize for the mistake. Now, an ordinance amending section 10-9-7A1D in paragraph H of section 9-1-1 of the Taylorville City Code, building permits and fees for certain detached accessory buildings. We had a motion by Alderman Bryant and a second by Alderman Dorchinez. And so we'll do a roll call again. Roll call. Ernie Dorchinez? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leland Dottie? Yes. Jim Mullins? Yes. No. Chris Coltetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? No. Number and the mayor votes yes, so the ordinance passes six to two. An ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a BDD number one redevelopment agreement by between the city of Taylorville, Illinois, and Lee and Diane Skinner, phase two of the 122 West Market Street project. Okay. Most of all, in Bud, second, all of them skull Teddy. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leo Andrade? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Yeah. Crystal Teddy? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? Yes. John Burrell? Yes. Ernie Dorchin? Yes. Yeah. Mayor Barry? Yes. Motion carries 9 to 0. An ordinance authorizing the sale of personal property owned by the city of Tedville, 1997 <coughs> Chevrolet 1500 full wheel pickup truck. Motion by Alderman Budd? Second. Second. Alderman Dorchinez, questions or comments? It's actually a four-wheel drive pickup. <laughs> yeah, four-wheel drive. <laughs> actually, it, it does say, we, that came up at the last council mm -hmm. meeting, somebody questioned that, and one of you said it was a four-wheel. That's why I changed it. I kept it a four-wheel, but I would think it's a four-wheel. It is. All right. It's all four-wheel. So it is a four-wheel drive pickup. Okay. Roll call. Lee Lanzotti? 
Yes. Yes. Jim Holland? Yes. Chris Copetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bennett? Yes. Sean Bertle? Yes. Ernie Dorchinet? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Mayor Bear? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. An ordinance amending the zoning classification of certain properties, Nicholas Root and Denise Street, of 822 East Vine Street. Oh, Thank Most you. of all, I'm in Bertle, second ball, and Dorchinez. Questions or comments? Roll call. Jim Olive? Yes. Chris Petty? No. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? No. Sean Bertle? Yes. Ernie Dorchinez? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leon Dottie? Yes. Mayor Barry votes <coughs> yes. Motion carries seven to two. Resolution with the Intergovernmental Agreement with Charleston. That pertains to our ambulance agreement with the City of Charleston. I need a motion to approve that resolution. Motion of Alderman Budd. Second. Second. Alderman Driscoll. Questions or comments? Roll call. Chris Petty. Yes. Megan Bryant. Yes. Larry Budd. Yes. Sean Bertle. Yes. Ernie Dorchin. Yes. Kathy Driscoll. Yes. Leland Dottie. Yes. Jim Hall. Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. <coughs> Motion to approve the appointment of Lisa Cope to the library board. Okay. Motion of Alderman Driscoll. Second. Thank you. Alderman Dorchin has questions or comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve the USDA grant application for the purchase of a new police car. Motion by Alderman Scaltetti, second by Alderman Budd. Questions or comments? Roll call. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? Yes. Sean Bertle? Yes. Ernie Dorchinez? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leland Dottie? Yes. Jim Yes. Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Motion to approve pay request number 1 for the Valentine's edition, Board 3, Franklin Street, Storm Sewer Project, amount of $44,000. $235 lien waiver and that amount has been received. Engineer certified work has been satisfactorily commit, completed. That's the sewer issue out by James Park. So, motion by mm -hmm. Alderman Dortzenez. Second. Second by Alderman Bryant. Questions or comments? Roll call. Larry Budd? Yes. Sean Bertle? Yes. Ernie Dorchinez? Yes. 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 Megan Bryant? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Motion to approve the recommendation of the Board, and fire, board of Fire and Police Commissioners to hire one lateral hire police officer. Mm -hmm. Motion of Alderman Driscoll? Second. Okay. Alderman Scaltetti? Questions or comments? This is Alderman. a replacement, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Roll call. <coughs> Sean Bertle? Yes. Ernie Gordon? Yes. Yes. Kathy Gerson? Yes. Lee Van Zotti? Yes. Jim yes. Holland? Yes. Chris Petty? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bell? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Most to approve the proposal with team company doing business as staff quick for hiring of three seasonal staff in the cemetery and lake department. I'd like to also say we, we possibly might need four if we hire a part time help in the marina. Uh, last year we ran into problems at the end of the season because some of our summer health was worked over the 600 hours, so that was an issue we didn't talk about at committee. So if we can amend this motion to four seasonal staff if we need to. Mr. Mayor, can I speak on that for a moment? Yes. Uh, how, how, uh, are you going to get this done? Uh, it's going to be I just saw this on the, on the agenda and went to the back of the scene. He spoke briefly with Julie. Apparently, this company, whoever they are, the city has dealt with for several years. I have never seen this contract. I would point out to you that uh, the contract is not, is not calls for a signature of staff quit. The contract does not really say that they're going to, uh, it's, it's kind of, it says they're not they're going to do drug stick screening, and at the bottom it says they're not going to do drug screening. And it says if they do drug screening and there's a problem, you guys got to hold them harmless and identify them. The contract doesn't say when you hire, um, who makes a decision to hire, what if they don't work out, can you fire them? It also provides that if one of these temporary folks damage some city property, they're not going to be liable. Uh, which it's an issue, uh, you know, if they damage any of your equipment or any other property while they have it. Uh, there's a lot of things in here, and it doesn't say that those are going to be their employees, that you're not going to be responsible for unemployment, workers' comp, health coverage, and all that. <coughs> uh, that may be the intent, but the contract doesn't say that. I'm just suggesting.
suggesting that if we have some time, this thing needs to be tweaked a little bit. I believe we have time at least till the March 15th. Uh, Mike, you don't need your people until <coughs> after then, do you? The cleanup scheduled for March 8th. But okay. I mean, I didn't. We work what we got. We've used staff quick in the past, Rocky. I mean, I assume they had a contract with us for years. Uh, they might have. I just, I, it was just on the, on the agenda. I looked at it, and I would never recommend the format. The company may be just fine, but uh, and maybe you've always said it's okay, but if an issue comes up, you're going to be holding them harmless. And, and uh, whose employees are they? So. So they were previously, there was a previous agreement between the city and staff coach from 2018 that was brought to my attention. There was a previous contract from 2018 in case you didn't hear Andrew. And um, they've done some restructuring. So initially everything was handled through the Springfield office and now it's being handled through the Shelbyville office. And the manager that took over that is the one that sent the document that he's reading. Um, I did bring some of that to her attention that it's supposed to be an agreement from with the city and staff work, not just the staff work signature. Historically, yep. they have paid unemployment. That's through them, it's not through the city. Um, I think the agreement at one point was to keep the employees so we wouldn't have to keep training them, which is why it's been the same employees over the course of the year. The reason for the contract was to reflect the current minimum wage, which has been updated. Um, that's why that document is here tonight. Okay. Could you hear all that, Rocky? No, I, I didn't. I'm sorry. I was talking a little fast. But if we've got a contract that's a different format than we did in 18, let's take a look at it. Okay. Obviously, it's worked out for the city in the past. I get that. Uh, I'm just looking out for if something happens, <clears throat> this document does not protect the city. Can we, can we pass a motion that, that we approve so this as long as you approve of it? Yeah, you can pass this up to review uh, on the recommendation of the city attorney and approval, final approval of the mayor. Can I get a motion to approve that? Can I? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I mean, help Mike out. Can we get some employees from other departments to help him out at least on that? How many days does the cleanup take, Mike? One day. Okay. okay. Yeah. Can That's I get fine. some help on yeah. the eight? Yeah. No yeah. problem. Yeah. So, what well, what I'm hearing now, we can afford to wait till the 15th. Yeah, if I get a couple of bags on that. Okay. Why don't we just wait for the 15th? We'll have Rocky to review it, and then we'll vote on it on the 15th. And both uh, Dave and Mike, you be able to spare an employee <coughs> for a day or two. All right. I'll I just asked Andrea or Julie to send me a copy of the 18 contract. And I, I thought she said it was from a different agency within the same company. It's, it's the same exact agency. It was just different management, and it was from 2018, and it has the previous minimum wage, and the agreement was a markup of like 47%. So they were being, it was a $10 an hour wage plus the markup was fourteen seventy an hour and this contract reflects the eleven hour dollar wage with the markup so it's like sixteen seventeen an hour. That's essentially but she but she was aware that there needed to be we'll we'll send you both contracts tomorrow and you can compare them and go from there and I'll help you out on the eighth also Mike. So all right. <laughs> so we don't need a motion next. So city attorney update. Quickly here, on, I keep talking to you about the state of shape and roadway dedication. Uh, last week, uh, up to the last week, I got the title work from uh, the title company, and uh, there are several different subordination agreements we're going to require. Apparently, there's uh, other easements in, in that roadway. Uh, there's two major mortgages we're going to have to get the release on, so uh, we'll be working on that. Hopefully, we'll get that done by the next council meeting. Uh, secondly, I'll report that the TDA final plan, everybody has signed, it's been, uh, all the signatures in place, it's been reported. So that's now included. Uh, I sent out to Ernie uh, back on February 24th, copy all of you, uh, with, the, for, your, for your review. I, I think I made the revisions you wanted to the lake lot leases and the cat ground leases. So if you think you're in a position to approve that, you might want to consider putting that on your march. 15th agenda. If there's any changes, let me know before then. Uh, it has come to my attention when speaking with uh, Alderman Olive and the mayor recently that we have an issue on a sanitary sewer line that uh, we may not have a recorded easement for. So we're looking with uh, see if we get some title insurance for that. The mayor's working on that with us, Jim Olive. And then finally, I sent to you some suggested changes to the city of the mayor. Uh, about the uh, 2021 Alley of North Cherokee Street Improvements Project. I haven't heard back yet, 
so I assume they're working on that. I, I send you all a copy of some of the concerns I have in the bidding documents. So, do you have any questions about any of these five problems? Ernie's got a question. Rocky, I, you asked me to uh, respond to those changes for the Lake Lawson yes. campground, and I did. Did you get that response? I did not. Okay, so anyway. I think you said it was just excellent, so I guess it, probably why I didn't do that. Kind of yeah, that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, if you're okay with it, everyone's okay. Why don't we put it on the March 15th agenda? Okay, and that gives everybody, everybody's got a copy of that. Did we, you, everybody got a copy of that, right? So you can look at it before the next meeting. If you got any problems, let me know before the meeting so I can get with Rocky and get the, <laughs> if we can change it or whatever. I think it's okay. <laughs> The changes are seen in the red and blue there, so it's great All right, thank you. Mayoral update. Hope that our winter is over. We look forward to the spring with the opening of Lake Canville set for March 15th. The trees that we approved to get cut down have been started. I think he's got three of, three of them down. He's working on the fourth one today. Could all aldermen get me a list? I've been getting phone calls last week and this week since they started cutting down trees. They would like to see some trees cut in their boulevards down also. So if aldermen could reach out to their constituents, see what trees they would like to get cut down and get me a list prior to the April 5th city council meeting. So we're giving you a month to give us a list. And hopefully we can use uh, board money to cut those down. Our COVID numbers seem to be decreasing and our vaccinations are increasing. In case you didn't know, there is another vaccination set for tomorrow. That just came out this afternoon. They got 200 doses. Hopefully we get back to as near as normal as possible as the weather warms up. Please continue to practice social distancing, wash your hands, and wear a mask. All right, committee reports. Discussions and or most to approve, adopt, and or deny, and or table, and or amend, and or refer to an appropriate committee and whole and parts of matters regarding the following subject matters discussed at the committee level. Ordinance. Alderman Bryant. Um, do, do we have a the motion is to recommend to the City Council to proceed with the demolition of 510 North Cottage after March 1st, 21 deadline for improvements has passed with dumpsters, dumpsters to be paid by Ward 1 with all costs for demolition, including but not limited to dumpsters, legal fee, labor, and equipment costs to be included on a lien paste place on the property. Um, I'd like to table that motion. All right. Motion to table the first motion of ordinance. Second. Second, second. second by Alderman Bud. Uh, questions or comments? No comments, so just vote. Roll call. Ernie Dorchinez? Yes. Yeah. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Yeah. Driscoll Teddy? Yes. Megan Bright? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Motion to the table carries eight to zero. Finance Committee, Alderman Bud. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the first motion was to recommend the City Council approve a business development district redevelopment agreement between the City of Table and George and Tina. Coughlin, BBA, Two Brothers Tuck Pony to provide repairs to the building located at 207 West Main Cross in the form of a forgivable loan in the amount of $70,000, providing requisite proof of insurance, release of lien, transfer of ownership, and property are provided. Funds to be paid out periodically as the work is completed and inspection. Make that inform the comment. Form of a motion by form Alderman motion. Bud. Yes. Second. 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 Alderman Bryant, comment, Alderman Bud. There, as I just read, they have to have proof of insurance, the release of the lien. The release of the lien cannot be paid for out of the BDD funds. I want everybody to know that right up front. So they've got a lot of work they've got to get done before they'll even be able to receive this fund. And answering that, I've talked to the Department of Revenue three or four times this past week, and they sent me all the applications for the release of the lien. I turned that over to Steve Craig. She's working with Coughlin and also uh, Kamadi, so we'll see if they can get that re lien released. What they're basically asking for, they're going to release the property from the lien and then make Kamadi personal, personally liable for the lien is what the guy from the Department of Revenue said. So I think there's more, a lot more substance in getting that lien released according to the 
property, but not the state will not be releasing the lien itself. So we'll wait and see. Steve Craig's is working on that with George and also uh, Aaron Kamadi, so the city doesn't have anything to do with that. So, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, can I suggest that, uh, Mr. Bud, that, that the motion be just tweaked a little bit, rather than approving it, is that the motion would be direct the preparation of a business development district redevelopment agreement, blah, 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 because I think you're, it takes an ordinance, as we know, and you're not going to put that ordinance on the, on the table of any committee, I mean, any council meeting until and unless you get that release of lane and you get uh, the transfer of the ownership actually to two brothers. Is it, would that be correct? Yeah, sure. Correct, and insurance also. But. So we want to actually see the ordinance in itself, and this is kind of a direction to find some uh, to make sure all these contingencies are put in there. Okay. And then uh, we are really directing the preparation of such a document. Okay, I'll change it to that point. Comment on the endorsement. Um, this is for the city attorney. Um, this would be great if, if this uh, if we can consummate this and, and get this job done. Um, but one of my concerns is, and I don't know how we can put this in the contract that uh, once we, uh, if everybody agrees to do it and everybody will wind its way through all the, the hoops that everybody has to jump through, uh, it says, uh, it says the, the transfer ownership are provided funds to be paid out periodically. Um, uh, how do we ensure that uh, once the work has begun, that they don't get to the point that we pay them periodically and they get to a point that they say they don't want to do any more work. They, they choose not to finish it. How do we make sure that that happens? Because we don't want to pay somebody, you know, uh, uh, we want to pay them for the work they're doing, but by the same token, if they stop at one time it would be before they're done, they walk away from it. How do we ensure that that happens? That's what I'm saying. How do we ensure that in the contract? Because we don't want to spend thirty-five or forty thousand dollars, and then they walk away from it because it gets too dangerous or for whatever reason. I believe that's, that's what the attorney in Klein's office is yeah. going to have to protect us from that. Uh, whether we have them to put a rigid uh, construction schedule in there, and it's just uh, you know once it's completed, and promise to pay. Or if you don't, we'll go back up to you personally. I think the contract also ought to have some strict language in there about holding the city and then find it harmless if in the process of, of uh, working on that building that they damage the two adjoining or one or, one or both the adjoining buildings, we do not want to be responsible for that work. And we need to be named as additional insured in any liability policy that we have. That's why I'm asking that we pass a motion to have a client's office prepare a document. Let's look at it and make sure we, we uh, dot the I's and cross the T's before we give away the city. Do we, do we need a motion or can we just table this until we get that, get all the liens and get everything? I mean, are we just wasting our time passing the motion? Or do we just table this until we get uh, every, all the ducks in a row? That probably makes more sense. One of, one of the questions that came about, about this when we were at the meeting uh, and the people were there, uh, I thought we, uh, the HBO officer was going to periodically check on the progress of that, and that was periodically why the uh, funds should be paid. So I think we left the ball in Andy's court to do that, didn't we, Larry? Well, he's going to, and then uh, Steve Craig's is going to, but when I talked to Steve uh, Klein, mm -hmm. the mayor was on the phone, and he said that there would be a lot of uh, things put in the contract to protect the city and the BDD funds, yes, that they just it. couldn't go in there and then get halfway through it, yeah, walk absolutely. away, they're still with all the city those funds back. Yeah. That was discussed with uh, State Clinic. Yeah, I thought that's what we talked about. All of them all? I was going to, and <coughs> since, uh, and being inspected, who are we going to, who is going to have the, the duties of inspecting the work that has been done? <coughs> that brought forth by uh, Met and Associates to do that along with the progress? No, I'm not sure on that. I don't think we're going to need an engineer, but we needed somebody maybe from the BGD committee to. So what are they going to know about the building? What about Andy? Well, okay. Andy would have it. No, you don't have any. But 
like, you know, I mean, Rich, Rich Payne's on that committee. Again, he's not a structural engineer, but he can yeah. tell if the electrical wiring was completed in a good fashion. Um, there's some other people on that committee. Yeah, but, but I think in no, the beginning, I we're, we're going to be working with, with the structure of the building okay. to secure it. That, that's kind of my concern. <coughs> well, then we could probably go back, you know, if this Cogman gets ownership of it, we, I mean, that's the one we would go after. Sean, well, Alderman a Brutal. A couple things that's all over the place based on different comments that they made. Number one is, you know, three or four weeks ago, we're going to tear this down to 70000 We didn't care about it. Now, all of a sudden, we've had two opportunities for two different people to send the salary to the building, which I think is a fantastic idea regardless of what it costs. That's just my opinion. But if these guys can do it, we can make it so difficult that they'll back out paid. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the process of at least passing a motion that we're going to wait for either Klein's attorney or our attorney, whoever's going to produce this ordinance or this document to tell us what they have to do versus what has to happen before they get paid. We, we need to show them that we're serious about this and that they have to, you know, step up to the plate at certain times in certain ways in order to get paid. But I don't want to make this so cumbersome. They say, you know, I don't want that. So. Well, I think that's a motion on the floor in a second. What was that motion, Rocky? That motion, that motion is just is, is along the lines of what Larry said, but to direct the preparation of it, the document. And we'll have a chance to vote on it once the document is correct. Correct. That you approve of, and Nick Nelson, the attorney for. Right. And James I think, and I think Sean's got a good point. If you get it prepared, you got a few bucks to get prepared with, with uh, Nick. Uh, that attorney, but it comes back and now, now two knows what it is that you're requiring. Okay. I, got, I got part of the question there still uh, is open. <coughs> what about uh, uh, Ben Associates had their engineer look at that building, correct? Yes. Prior to that? Mm -hmm. Why can't they, uh, if, if the council decides to do that and put that into the amendment, why can't we have uh, Ben Associates, uh, the engineer, uh, watch the progress of that building to see if they're doing it adequately, and then that way when there's no there's no circumventing the thing that is it right or is it wrong. And I think, think that needs to be brought to the council. And I think we need to put that into the action too, along with Stephen Klein, if that's what they do, put that in the proposal to make sure that that's right. Because we don't want to go in there and just put a truss up and say, okay, that's adequate. Everybody else looked at it and said it's adequate. Maybe it's not adequate. So I think the structural engineer ought to be looking at that as the situation arises and the completion of the project. Alderman Brown? Just real quick, if he's already, you know, the, the property is his, he's had to get insurance on it, all of this stuff. I mean, I find it hard to believe he's not going to want to, you know, invest well in his property and, you know, do a half job. <laughs> I have a bait, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, the pro for one, the property is not his yet. He's no, but once it is and he starts right. building on it, I right. he's not going to want to, you know, because if it comes tumbling down, that's him. That's on him. Right, right. So, I, I mean, he's got quite a bit of, quite a bit of, uh, you know. Right. We'd be able to go after him, and I assume he would have the assets to even tear it. He doesn't want to go through with the project. He could tear it yeah. himself. And yeah. Things like that. But so. contingent to the other part of that question is, too, having an engineer, a structural engineer, it would be adequate to say, well, the building's adjacent to that building that's having problems. That would look at that project and say, this could happen here or this could happen here. So, I mean, the structural engineer will know that. But if I get to that time, it's going to be a civil matter between them property owners. The city's not going to have anything to do with it. No, no. no. Not the city. I wouldn't think. I mean, that it, but it, I think it should be a structural engineer looking at that situation and then associates are structural I know engineers. structural engineers, but if somebody goes and builds a house somewhere, the city doesn't require a structural engineer to say he built it right. That doesn't make sense at all. Well, that's a different that's a different scenario because that that's a homeowner that's having a house built. We have no uh, source of 
acknowledge and say, well, your, your house is built wrong, and we're going to tell you you need a structural engineer. You can't do that. So we're, giving, we're, we're giving money to a property on Market Street on the south side of the square. Are we going to have a structural engineer make sure that they're doing it right? No. Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't think that we did it for any other property. So Th in this case here, we've had pictures where we looked at that situation and that and there's been people who went through it. I looked at them through Andy's pictures on the uh, when they went in and looked at it. I mean Jim has the pictures too. It's mm -hmm. evidence the, the trusses are starting to fall in. And the thing is with the uh, buildings adjacent to that uh, if you don't adequately have uh, the support where it's at, consequently, it might knock that building down either side. That's so that's what I'm saying. I mean, well, we're doing this. Let's go ahead and put the emphasis on this. Not, am I wrong, Rocky, on this scenario? Well, let's, let's see what they come up with on the proposal. Then. Um, yeah, I'm a little reluctant for us to, you know, guarantee something about the quality of the work because then if it would fail later then we're kind of responsible with the adjoining uh, building uh, owners because then we gave our approval of something that maybe shouldn't have been approved. Yeah, but we're putting seventy thousand dollars out for this project. Right. Alderman Olive? After my my last comment, I'm sitting here listening to all the other comments that have been made and then Sean made some some good ones that I guess if we would cause him to have to have a some kind of a structure engineer come in and look at everything he done and it's really we're dragging the city back into it. It will be at that point it will be his property and he will be the he will be the one that'll have to, to bear witness to whatever he does on it. So yeah and I'm I don't want to sit here and say I'm a structure engineer because I'm not. No. These buildings on the further are about as simple as they can be to build. They're two outside walls. Floor joists and ceiling covers. Yeah. That's it. There's nothing else there. There's nothing really inside that supports the thing other than maybe a beam somewhere here and there with support points. So there's, there's just nothing there that makes it that difficult. So if they take those side walls down to the, I'm assuming they're going to take it down to the floor on both sides and build those back up. So the truss system on a roof, this should be a simple, it's going to be labor intensive, but it's not going to be a structural engineer difficult. Bottom line, be his baby. Yeah, that's Like I said before, I don't think we need to run these people off. No. You know, they're, they're stepping up to the plate here. Let's have right? um, so we got a motion in a second. Respectively, I don't think that the city should be liable. That's what I'm saying, too. Oh, we're not. We're not liable. Right. Okay. All right. Roll call. Kathy Joseph. Voting to approve this, correct? Yes. To direct the preparation of an ordinance. Okay, yes. Leland Duddy? Yes. Jim yes. Owens? Chris Cosetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Good? Yes. Sean Burda? Yes. Ernie Joseph? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Most to recommend to the City Council approve the application for a BDD benefit for me and Diane Skinner for the property located at 122 West Market is now $4,725.43. I your voice has changed. Motion to Alderman Driscoll, second. Second. Okay. Alderman Teddy, roll call. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay. Roll call. I know. Oh, oh Larry's. Well, Larry, you <laughs> didn't have read that, yeah. but that's okay. Okay. Lee Lanzetti. Yes. Jim Olive. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Chris Cotetti. Yes. Megan Bryant. Larry Bud. Yes. Sean Bertel. Ernie Gorsenow. Yes. Kathy Gorsenow. Yes. 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 Thank you, Mr. Bud, for letting me read that. <laughs> uh, next motion was to recommend the City Council approve uh, Bittman Associates to prepare an updated business development district map with the cost to be paid from BDV. Make that form of motion. <coughs> motion by Alderman Bud. Second. Second by Alderman Bryant. Questions or comments? Can I ask a question? I should ask later before the meeting. I'll call it. I wouldn't have raised it. The map has to be redone for a reason. Well, the map that we have. It was made by Steve Klein, and it doesn't really tell you all of the different street things right to the detail. Okay. And when you're looking at it, it's hard to understand what's in and what's out. What's out. Okay. And this way, they can give all the PIN numbers to uh, Bittman Associates, and then we'll have a map so we, if somebody comes to us, we can say, yes, this is in the BDD. No, this is not. Okay. 
Roll call. Jim Mahler? Yes. Chris Cotetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Brittle? Yes. Ernie yes. Marchanez? Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leland Dunn? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Uh, the next motion was, uh, was to recommend the city council to purchase eight trucks for the street, sewer, and lake departments at a cost not to exceed seven hundred fifty thousand, and to be financed at a rate of one, no more than one point six one point six percent over a five-year period. Um, water department would be getting another truck uh, through their to the water fund. What it would consist of, there would be two new tandem trucks for the street department, one new single axle for the lake department one pickup for the lake department, two pickups for the street department, one pickup with a uh, service body for the uh, sewer department, and one 550 dump truck for the uh, street department. I'll second that. Most of all in the butt, second of all in the knowledge, questions or comments? Yes, can we add, can we add that motion and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign all necessary loan documents? the bank's probably going to require a tax exempt certificate for, for one. you got obviously a promissory note to sign. Yeah, it's a tax exempt, exempt uh, right. loan. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. And then we'll have documents from both Bob Writings and from uh, Russ Truck Center that will need to be uh, signed also. And it might also be mentioned that the, all these trucks are being bought through uh, state bid. Okay. The only question I had was 750000 at the time when we voted, I think we thought some of the trucks might be 21 models and we found out there were just going to be 22. Is that 750000 still going to be enough? Yes. It will be a price the, increase. But the, the trucks coming from Bob Ratings will probably be a 1500 to $2,000 increase. Ford has canceled all 21s now. They're setting up to build 22s. Um, we were hoping that Todd Cruz would have us that information to have uh, So he said 1500 to $2,000 should be the ballpark for the newer year. So it's $750,000 include the water department? No, no that department. does not include the water department. So it's going to be another, what, $80,000? No, a new, a new yeah. tan is, is right at around <coughs> $55,000. Water department's got plenty of money showing up. Right, Ernie? Mm -hmm. Okay. That might add we got the 1.6% from U.S. Bank. We did shop the rates around. Most of the other ones came in anywhere from 2.3 to 2.6. So we did very well as far as interest. Mm -hmm. Could you please explain just for those who are listening why we're making this huge purchase, the, the condition and the age of the vehicles that we're replacing? Well, two of the, uh, the tandem trucks that we currently have in the street department is just the, the repair bills are ridiculous. Um, one of them is a 97, and the other one is a 2001. We'll be replacing those. They're costing us a ton of money. Uh, the single axle out of the Lake Department is a 93 or 94? 91. 91, okay. It'll be this new uh, single axle will replace that. He has a pickup truck out there. I was out there the other day. The front axle on it is just leaning. Uh, I mean, you, the wheel, and you, there's no way you can drive that truck. And we're putting more money into these vehicles every day. And when you make one repair, the next day you got to make more repairs. And I can tell you that being over the finance the past eight years, for the last three or four years when we've gone to the round table for discussions on the budgets, I have asked all the superintendents to cut the equipment out of their uh, line items so that we can meet our uh, uh, a balanced budget, which we did, but the time has come where we have to make some repair and do some with equipment. And I can tell you that the past year, with the COVID, when everything went down March 15th of last year up until now, we've lost over $160,000 in gaming revenue, and that would more than pay for these, uh, these the payments for these vehicles uh, every year. What we've already lost in revenue. All right. Roll call. Chris Cosetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Budd? Yes. John Bertle? Yes. Ernie Dorchinen? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Layla Anzani? Yes. Jim Ollis? Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. And the last motion is recommend the city to accept the training and report as presented. Make that form motion. Motion by Alderman Budd, second. Second. Alderman Dorchinez, questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed?
No one cares. Street and sewer, all in the Okay, I, I, I was giving you an opportunity to don't read mine for me, but I'll read it for myself. <laughs> Motion to recommend to the City Council to bid uh, uh, curb and gutter replacement, sidewalk replacement, concrete, and gasoline and diesel fuel uh, with modifications to the uh, to the existing uh, paperwork. And um, uh, I'll put that in form of motion with a comment. Motion by Alderman Olive, second. Second. Alderman Scaltetti, comment Alderman Olive. What, uh, what the, uh, the changes are going to be, we soon did this last year and it never got around and then Mike uh, got it all written up because we, we've had times when we were going to do sidewalks or something and we went to the person that had, had the contract. Well, they didn't have time to do it, didn't know when they were going to be able to get to it. Now we will have the option if they can't do it within a 30 days or their scheduling doesn't allow them to do it, we have the right to go to another contractor. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Motion recommend the City Council to allow Superintendent Mann to purchase a new copier from Watts Copy System Inc. at a price not to exceed $32.96 plus a monthly maintenance fee of $34.95. So I put that in the form of the motion. Motion by Alderman Alderman. Second. Thank you. Alderman Skull Teddy, um, questions, comments, Alderman Deutschenet? Yeah. There was a suggestion, um, not food for thought, at the street search committee meeting that um, we might tie into the, the state bid on the, uh, on the copiers. Um, the state has got the, the, uh, the, the bid agreement with uh, uh, Xerox. Uh, the police department's going to get it. They're looking to see copiers. Um, so we might be better off if we could wait and see on this and uh, pay what they'd like to find out from I can't imagine we get a better price, but it's, it's worth looking into to take the, the state bid because um, I'm told that um, you, 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 because the state has got that bid, you're not going to get a cheaper bid from anybody else. So um, it, we might be better off to do it with zero. So I'd, I'd like to make a motion to table this so I find out. There's a motion on the floor of the table. This is there a second? Second. All the second by Alderman Gonzalez. Roll call. Mm -hmm. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Bruno? Yes. Ernie Dorsen? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Larry Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Chris Coltetti? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0 to the table. Okay. Next, uh, I'm going to come out of committee with the recommended city council to allow the personnel. City Council to forward to the Personnel Committee and allow the Superintendent Man to hire one employee for the sewer department. And put that in form of motion. Motion by Alderman Alderman. Second. Second. Alderman Bryant, questions or comments? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Public facilities, Alderman Sculpteddy. Thank you, Mayor. I just have one motion to recommend the City Council to reject the bid for Bill Tolles Excavated Incorporated in the amount of 63000 $325 to repave the police department parking lot and to rebid it, re rebid this at a later date. We can make that for the motion. Second. Alderman Scalzetti, second. Alderman Driscoll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve and or ratify payment of bills. Term $45,036.85. Alderman Bud. Second. Motion Alderman Bud. Second. Second. Alderman Gurdle. Comment Alderman Bud. Electric and gas, 18,218.08. Telephone, 1,055.35. Garden, 1,776. Insurance, 1,563.68. Don't mind public risk. This is Workers' Comp for April, 19,273. Tyler Technologies, which is the annual maintenance agreement uh, <coughs> with the city, 142809. Ford and Harrison, labor attorney, 3572. Post office, 1000. Downtowntable.org, October, November, December, Hotel Motel, 3617.22. Voter fuel tax. Cargill for 105 tons of salt. 
5,246.44. Police Department, C and J detail, 1,113.38. Rail Heron for uniforms and equipment, 2,038.81. Fire Department, Municipal Emergency Supplies, 1,376.78. Graham and High, Roof Inspection, 2,722.50. Street Department, Blue Mill Garage, 4,357. Bodine Electric for signal repairs, 3,248.33. Sewer Department, Coal Equipment, the Bacter Truck, and this is for the old truck, 9,999.52. Handler Excavating for the Valentine Sewer, 23,394.16. Water Department, Brooks and Associates. 1,049.69, Midwest Meter, 1,108, Chemicals, 10,116.82, and these all totaled $134.42. Roll call. Larry Budd? Yes. John Bertel? Yes. Ernie Dorchanez? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanzetti? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Driscoll Teddy? Yes. Megan Bright? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. The motion go into closed session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C1 and C3 to discuss the performance of Human Resources Manager Andrea Conrad and any and all subject matters related to such subject matters include if present the following persons to be present during all or part of such closed session. Namely the mayor, the alderman, city attorney, city clerk, city treasurer, human resource manager, and such other persons as the mayor may decide and announce during the city council meeting and or any of the aforesaid subject matters discussed in open or closed session. So I need a motion to go into closed session. Senate. Motion by Alderman Bryant. Second. Alderman George Roll call. John Bertel. Yes. Ernie Dorchanez. Yes. Kathy Dressel. Yes. 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 Yes.